And that's where a lot of people miss because they're looking at the market as a one trick pony. I know one thing, mm. but you are competing against the smartest, the trickiest, the most well capitalized, the most crooked people in the history of the world that is finance. <laughs> Welcome back everybody to Be The Trader. Today is gonna to be a very fun, fun time indeed. I'm bringing back Kunal, the man from Bulls on Wall Street. <laughs> I love this dude, he's so nice, such a great dude. He's been training for such a long time. And if you don't know who he is and you check him out, uh, not only on his website, but also you need to just definitely check him out from his previous episode that he did with me. We did a one-on-one -on -one when a while back actually Kunal, where we dive into his story but today we're gonna to focus more on topics. So Kunal, welcome back to the show, brother. What's going on? You've come a long way since the Zoom day. <laughs> Dude, it's been a long time. But <laughs> it's crazy, that's how we started. Yes. Now we're face to face and it's so much better, man. Cause like now we can like but we hang out But your Zoom the day. was pretty awesome. You had like a little Star Wars background oh, yeah. kind of thing. <laughs> I did. I have like the Mandalorian in the background. You did. Now I have an Iron Man helmet too in and the background. And you know what? That's like the thing now. When you do interviews, you got to have like the cool background or to. it's not a good interview. Because it's not who you are. You know, you got to play so who you, you are out the cool there. But background. I had the background too, though. I didn't, let me be real, though. You got I, Star Wars. I had, you got your... Of course, I had the background, you green screen. Podcast yep. credit check. <laughs> so, now you're good. But now we're back and now we're t stepping the game up, right? That's all yeah. about it. You got to grow. You got to just take your time. But enough about that. But, you know, what I'd love to know... Is something that you see commonly happen in the market are people saying you know i i know it works for me now like i'm doing really well trading you know x y and z sure. but i go through these spurts where i just do not so well and I, and I can't i'm going through this cycle of like i know it works for me but i'm still like trading the stuff that's not so great any advice for people who are in that mindset where they're trying to figure out how to move forward from that moment yeah so this market itself in 2022 has brought this on full force for a lot of people. So if you're in 2021, 2020, and I would say half of 2021, two th half of 2021, half of 2020, all of 19, 2019, so on and so forth, you know, you could be a one trick pony and that's really what a lot of people are anyways. Mm -hmm. And the old adage is like, okay, you only have to be really good at one trading pattern and you can make millions of dollars, right? right? And it's like, come on. If you're gonna make millions of dollars drawing one squiggly line on a chart because you had a gapper scanner from trade ideas and you make a bunch of money, then that probably may have worked for a period of time, right. for a period of months, but that's not really trading in the way that really great traders do in terms of analyzing all the angles in a different market and figuring out different ways to attack what's happening mm -hmm. in real time, making adjustments, but then also utilizing setups that are currently working right now. So, right, if you were like, say, a momentum trader, Right. And you trade small caps. So like a lot of my students trade small caps. I personally don't, but uh, it's like one of my best students all day. He trades small caps and he's like the best at it that yep. I've seen. And he only trades it on the long side. But like he came to my house, you know, a month ago and he's like, man, rough year. And he is like, I mean, he's so good. So he's still making money in this market trading that specific style, yep. but like it's failed a lot more and he hasn't seen the other styles. And I've seen that in a lot of my students. And what's happening is like, okay, this may have worked in 2019. Mm -hmm. You are the master of this and you've been taught like, okay, focus on one setup, right. focus on one setup. Yes. If you're good at this one setup, you make all this money. Look, if you're good at one setup, you have the right to make XYZ handful of hundred dollars a day. Hey, we wouldn't be able to do these face-to-face -face interviews if it wasn't for our sponsor, Cobra Trading. So if you can just give them a few seconds of your time, we'd really appreciate it. Cobra Trading is the go-to broker for day traders and short sellers. And I'm not the only one saying this. In fact, Benzinga awarded Cobra Trading as the go-to broker for short selling. They have a heavy focus on direct market access order routing, so you have the fastest execution. They have some of the best locate prices and availability. They also have amazing 
customer service. I've experienced many different brokers and it's why I use them every single day and why I'm proud to have them as our sponsor. Sign up now by clicking the Be The Trader referral link below and earn one free month of software with Cobra and 25% off all commissions. Now let's get back to the show. Yep. But it does not give you the right to say, I'm gonna make money all the time and I'm gonna make tons of money. Mm. The people that make really a lot of money, they are seeing the market in a holistic way from all the angles and have different ways to attack it. So what was working two years ago does not work for most of 2022. So if you are the master of this setup and you know everything about it, right? then the only thing you could have done in 2022 is not trade it at all. But nobody's going to do that. Hmm. So the whole like focus on one setup, it is true. But what you have to do is focus on a setup in, that matches the market conditions. So there's four market cycles. So if you say, look at four market cycles, you have an accumulation phase, which is like your basing phase. You have a run-up phase that's your good old-fashioned bull market. You have a distribution phase, which is when you're like near market highs, but stocks are selling off. So that would be like if you were looking at tech stocks in November, October, November, December, the <clears throat> market was at highs. Like yes. the NASDAQ was at high, but you were seeing all the tech stocks start to already fade off, right? So you saw Affirm and UPST and Squarespace and PayPal and so on and so forth. Right. They're already starting to slowly trickle down. So smart money is selling to essentially, right? Not smart money. We don't want to say dumb in today's day. <laughs> the not smart money. So that's a distribution cycle. So the way you trade a distribution cycle is very different than the way you would trade in a run-up cycle. Well, in a run-up cycle, the market's at highs too. Mm. So... In the layman's terms, you may not really understand like, well, the market is at highs in the run-up cycle and the market is at highs right now. Right. So, and CNBC and whoever, right, prognosticators are going to say, hey, market looks good. We're at highs. But underneath the hood, the market is selling off. Mm. And so there's a specific style that you need to trade for that. And there's a specific style that you need to trade for run-up, which is your bull market setup. And so like your traditional momentum techniques that people are using that so many people became internet famous for, yep. those only work in one out of four market cycles. Mm. But because we haven't seen the actual other market cycles, nobody really knows who can trade and who can't, mm. right? And so you can have a market cycle for X amount of months, and so you have all these people with their fake PLs and so on and so forth. And they are like shredding, right? I made $2 million, $1 million, yeah, yeah. whatever it might be. But that strategy very specifically works for that market cycle. Mm. Does it work in distribution market? No. Does it work in a rundown market? So that would be like your bear market cycle. Not at all. So if you use momentum techniques for small caps, large caps, whatever, to the upside, but it's a bear market, it wouldn't work. Yep. If you use gapping strategies, it's going to work very seldomly, yes. right? Or way, or in general, not working. Yep. They won't work at all for the most part. Yep. If you use gapping strategies, so you know, the advent of scanners has made people lazy. Hmm. So you have all these scanners like Trade Ideas and you know TC2000, Finviz, so on and so forth. So there's a whole subset of generation of traders that look at gappers and say this is good because okay. it gapped. Yep. yep. <laughs> right? This is good because it gapped. Well, professionals, all we saw when we saw gaps this whole year, we shorted them. But nobody that would started in the year before, they see gap and they say, oh, if it breaks pre-market high, I buy. Mm, that's so true. Right? Yep. Yep. If it that breaks. Worked, that worked not too long ago. It <clears> breaks <throat> your opening range on your one-minute candles, which don't ever use one-minute candles. But if it breaks the range on one-minute candles, it's a buy. So that worked for maybe X amount of time. But the actual play in 2022 is if it broke pre-market highs in 2022, that's where you're short. Mm. Let it go over just like 10 cents, 20 cents, and the poof, people are taking it down because those gaps fade because you're in bear market. So every gap is essentially a liquidity event for people to get out to suckers. Mm. So the people that are having their gap scanners and that's what they buy. And there's a whole 
There are gurus out there that made tens of millions of dollars from subscribers on the simple strategy of buying pre-market highs from gappers. Yep. But that never works in bear markets. And everybody that's been trading a long time knows that. So this market is teaching us about real trading skills, which is not like anything crazy. You can still have like one or two setups, but you do have to have one or two setups in different market phases. Mm. So what works in your run-up phase, you have to have a different setup for your distribution phase. You have to have a different setup for your rundown phase, which is your bear market. And then now we're entering a accumulation phase, which is essentially a rate a range near market bottoms potentially right. where you will have days to weeks of bullishness and then days of weeks to bearishness and so on and so forth and you'll be in a little bit of a range for a time that requires actually very very specific techniques too and even for me like so i've been trading the longest time i started my business in 2008 we've been in accumulation phase now for a little bit it still took me a few days to realize like hey market conditions have changed like I was using the bear market strategies of like shorting things, like something gaps down, it pops into resistance, short right, it, right? Um, anything, bear flags. There's a million different patterns. Right. V breakdowns under VWAP. The market has changed a little bit. It took me a few days. Yes. I'm like, man, what's going on? Right. But then you have to see it like in a little bit of a different angle. Sometimes you got to take a deeper dive into and just look at a lot of stocks. And then you realize, like, wow, the market's changed a little bit. Yep. And so, like, what would be a bear flag, for example, the last, like, say, six, seven days <clears throat> is actually a rounding pattern for a buy, right? And so the pattern itself still works. It's not obsolete, but it's a matter of when you use it. Hmm. And so if you look at, like, any stock that spikes down the last six days, seven days, and it spikes down and it goes sideways so it looks like essentially like a hockey stick. Yep. That <clears throat> setup itself, when it breaks below, has been working for months. But the last six, seven days, that is actually a buy opportunity. It's a rounding pattern. So it's about understanding market cycles. So you can be the master of one setup, yep. but when <clears throat> the market cycle changes, you have to change. And you have to understand that nuance of when to flip the switch. And that's where a lot of people miss because they're looking at the market as a one-trick pony. I know one thing, mm. but you are competing against the smartest, the trickiest, the most well-capitalized, the most crooked people in the history of the world that is finance. These people are smarter, better, and more well-capitalized than you in almost all different matters. So, like, how do you beat them? Well... You got to work your butt off. Yeah. And you have to be able to see all the angles. And it can be done. Yep. Because if you look mm -hmm. at like statistics. I don't mean you're rub, but because you're all going on a roll here, yeah, yeah. right? But I also want to get in something because like yeah. you've hit on so many things already. And one of those things was just the idea of like you were just saying, you kept saying like you got to go through the, the market cycles. Every market cycle is a little different. So the patterns may adjust and they may be different. Triggers yeah. may used to be a short now or a long. But it seems like. It would be normal for a lot of people that it takes years to go through all those cycles. Like, I True. mean, right? I mean, this has taken years. For, I mean, you've been trading for a long time. Sure. So you've seen all these cycles to where you understand that these nuances are going to make these changes. So for the people who are, are new, right? They're not, they've only been trading for a year or two years. Like, what's the advice for those people who, who are going through like, hey, like, I didn't know that this is a situation. Like, I'm listening to this and this makes sense. What do I need to do now? So in essence, every pattern you learn or every setup, a setup is a list of conditions that must trigger before a trade is taken. So that's essentially the name of what a setup is. Every setup has to be matched with a certain cycle in the market. Right. That's all. So you just have to understand like this thing that I'm using here is applicable in this area. Are there some setups that you've done that are ap applicable in all, in all kind of markets, but, but, but it's just not as, I should say, prominent. It doesn't show up as much. Like you really got to be patient for it. Does that make sense? There will be very, very specific instances of, like say rubber band setups, mm -hmm. where that's an overextension setup. You know, there are specific instances where something has 
reverted so far from the mean that inevitably you will get a XYZ reversion to the mean. But even then, what happens in bear markets is the statistical deviation of what a stock can move, like what you think it can move, they expand. Mm. And so like, you know, you can look at something and say like, wow, this thing has dropped 20 points. Well, if it's dropped 20 points in a bull market, it would be like, hey, a mean reversion trade. But what actually happens in a bear market is that 20 points can become 40 points and 60 points and 80 points. And so you have to change the parameters also of what you're looking at. And so that in essence becomes a very, very tricky trade. So the mean reversion trades are effective, but you have to also be able to calculate the fact that, hey, in a bull market, the mean reversion might be 10%, but in a bear market, it might be 50% on XYZ stock. Because XYZ, every stock has its own range. Right. So that becomes almost, that's a hard setup for most traders to actually internalize and just learn Understand. because you have to you know know that on a real level so in essence like you know one thing that you can focus on is like news plays you know news plays will work in essence and a little bit of an independent way to what's happening in the general market now it will still come into play because you know news plays in a bear market like good news is bad news but a lot of people don't know that mm. right so you still have to like you want to play those plays in news plays, the parameters of them are always the same, but you do still have to understand, like in a bear market, like great news is bad news. And can you? Because I know people are. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm just curious. Why do you say that? Good news. Is so bad news. you can have like in a bear market. So if you look at the last earnings quarter, mm -hmm. you know, so the three months ago, we're in new earnings quarter. There were a lot of stocks that like would gap up and they beat on earnings. Hey, we beat on earnings. We beat on expectations. We beat on revenues. But because the market cycle was in a bear, they were fading off the whole way. Like you would see stocks that were up 5%, 10% pre-market. They would end the day down 10%, 20%. So the news plays is like great stuff to play, but you still do have to understand the, cycle. the market cycle. Mm. So right? any advice for people on how to understand or how to learn market cycles in real yeah. time and watching So in it? essence, like also... You like say you're a gap trader, right? Yeah. You're fading all what you're doing is you're fading those things right. in the bear market. That's the main thing. Now you have to fade them still at the right spots, right? You gotta wait until they get to resistance. You gotta wait for them to crack. You have to still, still have, have set up. You still have yeah. to have some type of setup. Yeah. But they will crack. You know, a majority of them will. You know, and that's just the numbers game. For the one that like flies open. You yeah. know, a majority do crack. And if you saw, like, if you're a small cap trader, you saw so many knives. How many wicks would you see the last six months, right? Where something's just like, it gaps up and it's just hanging. And then wick, right? And everybody's getting knifed. And that's just the nature of that market cycle. And that'll happen even in large cap stocks in this kind of thing. Like, mm -hmm. you may gap up. It may have the greatest news around. That stuff is getting faded. Like I had so many trades in the last like three, four months, like in Chinese stocks, like Baba. Baba would gap up so many times, like six, seven, eight, ten points. And it it was always the same news. China's looking at loosening some regulations, letting some of these companies off the hook. Yep. And so Baba would gap up and then like we would literally just fade it like opening tick. Mm. Like poof, straight down every time. You know, and yeah. so that's just a matter of market cycle because in the bull market, like if I saw that piece of news, I would be waiting for a little bit of a pullback and I'd be like trying to get in desperately, right? Like that's interesting. Like, oh I love God, that I gotta get. I gotta get right, in there. Absolutely. Right? Yeah. I gotta get, that's it's really the good same. News. You still are interested in it. It's yeah. just in a different way. So you know, focusing on news plays will at least yeah. keep you away from necessarily like having to look at the Nasdaq all day or the Spy or the IWM. Because that's what actually makes bear markets a little bit tricky is in a bull market, you don't have to sit there and look at the market indexes all day. Like in a bull market, a flat day is often sometimes the best day for breakouts. Like the market's flat, but so the hot individual setups will all start just ripping. But in a bear market, every stock is basically like running in conjunction with the NASDAQ or, mm. you know, the SPY. And right now, America's become like a very tech, you know, tech-oriented country. So 
A majority of big companies are on the NASDAQ. Mm. So like that's like the really the main one you want to watch, especially if you're trading tech stocks. Mm. So like, you know, every <clears> tick, <throat> like if you look at the intraday charts of Apple or Microsoft, NVIDIA, AMD, whatever it is, right. they're all basically following right the overall NASDAQ pretty much every day. That's what bear market does. In a bull market, NASDAQ can be sitting there, but if AMD has some news out, it's ramping. You and know, becomes a leader and then everything yeah. says like <laughs> And then or if NVIDIA has not even some news up, but just has a really good pattern. Yep. It's going, regardless of what's happening in the overall index. So that's where like things get a little bit tricky. So in essence, like if you're brand new, you can still trade. Like yep. you just have to understand the small nuances of, hey, where we are. And yep. now like the big thing is like everybody's talking about recession, inflation, bear market. Usually when retail people are starting to talk about that, the nasty part of the bear market is over. So a lot of people will still get burned in this next few months because now, like, probably the U.S. will announce that we're in a recession or we'll have inflation. You know, everybody already knows this stuff. And so now everybody's like, oh, I got to get into some bear market tactics. But the market, may, that's when the market starts to go the other way. Hmm. So you always have to be a little bit careful and let the price tell you what's really happening. Yep, yep. And I love you said that because it, the biggest thing that you just kept hitting on that I think a lot of people are going to take away from today is just the whole idea that you are, you got to be understanding of what market you're in and you got to be aware of it. And you also mentioned that you kind of get a feel for that by like looking at multiple stocks, right? Can you explain why when you look at multiple stocks, you get a better feel than just staring at like maybe just small caps or just only looking at small caps, if you will? So that's actually a great question. First of all, let me ask you something. Yeah, go ahead. You are not bald, but you always wear a hat. That's true. Yep. What's up with that? I don't know. I just wear like, a hat because you know, yeah. I wear a lot of hats because I'm bald. <laughs> <laughs> I have a hat just because I, I guess always I, wonder, I, I so like hats a lot. I had two questions before you came here. I'm like, texting one of my one of my business partners. I'm like, I need to know if he's Indian, <laughs> and I need to know if he's bald. <laughs> and I'm over for two. <laughs> I'm over for two. Yeah, you are. And that is really that's thrown me off. I haven't been over for two in a long time. Unless we go to a bar and I'm trying to talk to chicks. <laughs> right? Like I've been over for two in a long time. Yeah. So you you've got I'm great hair. Hispanic and I have hair. Man. I was so off. Uh, yeah. I was like, I, this guy's got to be Indian. Man. <laughs> me and him get along so well. <laughs> he's got to he's got to be one of my people, Gujarati. <laughs> I appreciate yeah, I'm, I'm that. I appreciate that. <laughs> but a lot of people think that. But I am Hispanic. I am Hispanic. Okay. Because, you know, Indian people also, like, you know, we shorten names. So, like, if you have, like, a Samir, right? Like, he's, like, if you go to, like, in Michigan, like, in Indian people, we own liquor stores, gas stations. So, like, if you guys see a guy named Samir, he's like, always like, I'm Sam. Right? Or, like, yeah. a guy would be like, I'm Mo. Yeah, I'm like, hey, your name ain't Mo. <laughs> So, like, when you're like, hey, man, Alex. Like, I'm like, you're like, your name's not Alex. Yeah, <laughs> he could be, like, it could be, like, 34 letters in his name for all Yeah. Know. But then, you know, you're not Indian, so your name's probably just Alex. It's just Alexander. Yeah. Sorry to disappoint. <laughs> I mean, I'm not disappointed. <laughs> not disappointed. It's all good. It's all the good. The hair part did disappoint me. I'm like, <laughs> yeah. Maybe I got a hat, bro. <laughs> yeah. I got, a, I got a nice hat, bro. Yeah, absolutely. So now, round it back. Round it back. So, what I was saying is... For people going through, like, when they go going through these cycles, you said, you mentioned that they, when you look at multiple stocks, it's better to look at multiple stocks, yes. right? Instead of just focusing maybe on just, like, small caps or only tech stock, like, kind of look at a multiple yes. to get a feel. Why is that? First of all, don't be lazy. That's mm. the main thing. So if you just turn on your scanner in the morning and you're like, oh, I'm going to trade, you're never going to be an elite trader. Mm. You may make your 500 bucks a day, 1,000 bucks a day, whatever. You might even make enough money to do some nice Photoshopping for some P&Ls because you probably have to have something green, right? To, you got to add something to it. But you're never going to be a lead trader. You turn on your scanner, right? Like, and you just make money. Like, come on. So going through a lot of stocks, right? So like a scanning routine or a filtering routine at night or in the morning, whatever right. you want to do. It does a few things. Number one, of course, you're going to get trading ideas that maybe were not on your radar. But beyond that, like when you go through like, say, a thousand stocks in a day, yep. you have an inherent pulse on what's happening in the market. Mm. Beyond just like, hey, 
I need five or six or 10 stocks to trade, you will have an inherent pulse on what's happening in the market. Because it's just, when you flip through that many stocks, you will start understanding, okay, these sectors are firing. Because look, in 2022, it wasn't all bear market. Mm. Yeah, tech stocks got <laughs> shamangled, but there were oil stocks. There were for a while coal stocks, aluminum stocks, and so yep. on and so forth. And they all rolled over, but there was a period of time where there were a lot of things actually going. And if you were like one of those guys that were doing momentum techniques to the long side on certain names, right. you still could have done it in 2022. If you had gone through the actual routine of cycling through stocks, cycling through sectors, and figuring out where their strength is and the weaknesses in beyond your gap scanners, Mm. That would give you a lot because look, there were a lot of oil stocks that were like four, five, six dollars. They're at fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty dollars, right? And now they're coming back down, so they have momentum both way. Yep, tons of them. So you know, Fang, Oxy, MRO, CLR, so on and so forth. There were coal stocks like BTU and <clears throat> ARCH yep. that they were up five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred percent in the last twelve months. So the momentum was there. Maybe not in the traditional way that it was the year before, right. but it was there. You just got to be more, pay more attention. So right? in, in 2022, yes, everything rolled over, yep. but the pockets of strength were there. And you could have still traded those using the momentum techniques from the year before. But you have to filter through the stocks and the sectors to see that. So when you go through, say, a thousand stocks in a day, it's just like part of your routine. Like it's part of your routine, but it gives you a pulse of what's happening in the market. You're going to know what sectors are going off. You're going to know groupings of stocks. There are actually times in the market where it's not just sectors, but certain price ranges of stocks are going off. So when you go through a lot of stocks, yep. you might realize like, wow, this 10 to $20 range is really heating up in biotechs. Like that could be something. Yep. There could be an edge there. It might not be anything. It could be a wild goose chase, but you've got a lead, right? All we're looking for is leads. Right? Yep. You got a lead there. You know, hey, big cap tech is selling off, but small caps are going up, right? So you have a lead. Hey, I got to short these, long these, so on and so forth. So like all we're looking for is leads, right? Yep. A possibility of somewhere we can go where the strategies that we use could be applicable. And that becomes huge. But beyond that, there's a huge reason you want to do it. Trading is, especially if you're just a pattern trader, so, you know, you have discretionary traders and systematic yes. traders. But if you're like more of a pattern trader, for example, then pattern recognition in real time, instantaneously, within a millisecond is the whole game. So the only way to actually do that, man, if you go through a thousand stocks a day, so like when I go through my scans, you know, I have a daily chart, an intraday chart next to them. Yep. So like when I'm going through my scans, like I see something interesting, I look at the intraday chart just to see like where it's been bouncing from. Right. Does it react to the things that I keep on my charts? You know, so like I use a 9 and 20 EMA and a VWAP and a handful of things. Right. Does it react to my patterns? Right. It could react to patterns, <clears throat> but does it react to mine? Does it react to the things I keep on my chart? And then there could be stocks that just ramped beyond just like saying like, oh, fuck, like I missed that. I want to look at it and say like, why wasn't this on my radar? Like where in my process... Did I miss this? Hmm. Was it laziness? Did I not have the right scan? Did I not do my homework? How can I tweak what I do so that's on my list? Because I would trade that. Because I see like, oh, wow, I was reacting to what I was into. <clears throat> right. So I want to do that. So I want to like sit there, find opportunities, see what's working. But also, it's training me like I'm seeing patterns all the time. Yep. So your scanning is like you're just mentally rehearsing visualizing what could have worked, where you could have played, and what's working in this current market. So you're getting repetitions. Yep. So if you think about it, like, you know, you got 365 days in a year, whatever, 250 trading days. You go through a thousand damn charts a day, 250,000 charts a year. Well, you do that for four years, <clears throat> you get a, a million charts under your belt. You're telling me you can't understand patterns? If you got a million charts under your belt, you can't understand patterns. I don't know. I think you can't. 
I know you can, <laughs> yeah, right? You can. Like, I know you can. Yeah, that's easy. So like now you can take out the intellect and your job situation, whatever. I got this much capital, not capital. Take it all out. Man, you go through a thousand charts a day for four years. You got a million charts under your belt. Like, how are you not gonna know what XYZ pattern looks like? How could you not know? Yep. So you give yourself four years, million charts. All right? Now look, you probably don't need a million charts to like be self-sufficient. You know, that may be to obtain mastery, but you can probably get a little, you can probably make some money even before that. But you gotta do it, thousand charts a day. That's not a big deal. There's 8,000 stocks, ETFs in the market. So you're going through one eighth of them, big fucking deal. These charting programs, you just hit space bar to go through them. That's true. All right. As easy, Once you get through it, go through that. Go through it. Yep. So, like, if I was like a new trader, I would just take the high cap 1,000, right, top 1,000 stocks of the market or whatever, on a week weekend, and just phew, go through them all. Hey, where are these stocks moving? What patterns are working? What's working intraday? What's working on the daily? Right. You know, even if that's not what you trade, whatever. <clears throat> like just. Make a list. Go through it. At least you know what to avoid if it's against your strategy, yeah. right? I'm go through Russell 3000, whatever. Go through them all. Yep. That's when you're going to get good. But that's when you're going to see all the angles of what works in this current market. Mm. See, when you go through a thousand stocks every day, you're going to see what works in this current market that you're in. Today. That's good what advice, What happens man. today? Well, look, now that I'm gonna end on that note, but I just want you to know, like, thank you so much for sharing that because everyone who's listening right now, you need to rewind. You just need to rewatch this whole thing because he just dropped some golden nuggets for you, all of you. And I know a lot of them are sharing this with other friends right now because they're like, okay, I gotta share this with someone else. So, look, now thank you so much, man, for keeping it real and sharing some insightful information, brother. Bye. I appreciate it, man. Thanks. Holla.